zinc, paddle, magnesium oxide. Now y'all know about atoms. Y'all know about atoms. Y'all know how they look, you know what the electrons are. So in order to understand what's going on today, uh, we're going to look at a reaction. So we're, we're going to, I'm telling you already, we're going to see a chemical reaction. But we're going to see how magnesium reacts with oxygen. So I'm going to give you the magnesium. Where do you think the oxygen is going to come from? The air. So do you think if you hold magnesium up in the air, it just magically reacts? <coughs> no. You have to activate it. Now, here's the deal. All chemical reactions occur because electrons are being donated or shared so they can become stable, right? Well, in order for that to happen, they have to start moving. Sometimes they, the two substances just get together and they start moving. But other times, you have to get it moving. So what do you think we're going to do today to get those molecules, or those atoms moving? Put it in something that will activate water. Oh, Gretchen, what's going on? Oh, yeah, we might heat it up a little bit. We might heat it up a little bit. Okay, and that doesn't heating things up make molecules move? Okay, so here's what we have to do so that you can totally understand. First of all, I want you to write down, and this is for our information, our data gathering, and you're going to put several things, and I know y'all can be very neat with atoms because I've already graded your lab, but we're going to need to draw magnesium with all of its electrons and oxygen with all of its electrons. So if y'all will just take a couple minutes and draw the atomic structure of these two atoms. All right, so if this is magnesium, How many protons, Cree? Twelve. How many neutrons, Neptune? Twelve. What did you say? Twelve. Twelve. <laughs> Twelve neutrons. How many energy levels, Susanna? Three. <coughs> three? Why do you say three? Because it's on the third period, good. <laughs> okay, three energy levels. So I've got one, two, what? Where do I put it? 12 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Okay, now I've got 10. 12 o'clock on the third and, all right. Now, how many valence electrons, remember everything moves from high to low so that it can be stable and how's magnesium going to be stable? Jordan? Give away two electrons, okay? And I guess I'll have to move oxygen over a little bit. All right, how many protons, Avery? Where are you? Eight. Eight, okay. <laughs> how many neutrons, Avery? Eight. Okay. Miguel, how many energy levels? Two. Why? Huh? Not family two. Period two. Okay. Brianna, where do the electrons go? So now what's oxygen gonna have to do to be stable? Gain two. What a coincidence, magnesium has two, oxygen needs two, right? So if you put these two together, it's gonna to be a one-to-one -one ratio, isn't it? All right, so if I add these two together, I can get a compound, because what does the word compound mean? Things put together, all right? And my compound will be called magnesium oxide Magnesium is just going to give up its electrons to oxygen, and they're both going to be stable. And that's how you write it, since it's a one-to-one -one ratio. That's called a formula unit, actually. 
because these become, since they, this loses two electrons, what does it become? An atom that gains or loses electrons is called an ion. This becomes a positive ion, and what's its charge? Positive what? Zero. It's going to lose two negatives, so it's going to be positive two. And oxygen will end up being negative two, because it gains two electrons, right? Okay. So you know how the electrons are going to move in the reaction. Now, you have got to be concerned with properties because everything has physical properties, right? And they can be used to identify substances. And if you have a chemical reaction, what are you going to get? I can't hear you. No. If I have oxygen, right? It's a clear, colorless gas, right? Well, if it turns into magnesium oxide, do you think the properties of oxygen will change? Yeah, I get new physical properties in a new substance. That's how I know I've had a chemical reaction. <coughs> All right. So if I, if, what? I, I just really can't hear you. Okay, that's good. If magnesium reacts with oxygen, then yeah, remember expected results. Expected results. Or then I'm going to see a new. Now, how will you know it's a new substance? How can you measure that? <laughs> what are you going to see? A change of what? Physical properties. Okay, if magnesium reacts with uh, oxygen, then the physical properties will also change. Now this, there's other ways to write this, but I want y'all to be concentrating on physical properties. That's what we're talking about. Okay, where can you find magnesium? On the periodic table of the elements. Where can you find the oxygen? Of the elements. So they must both be elements. But when you put them together, they become a compound. All right, so elements. Here's the thing about elements. There's only one kind of atom. Only one kind of atom. It can be more than one atom. For instance, it could be oxygen or it could be two oxygens. But it, they're just one kind. You understand what I'm saying? Clear on that? Okay. A compound is different. So here's the element. A compound is different kinds of atoms. You know, a salad has different kinds of atoms, doesn't it? But it's not a compound. Why is salad not a compound and magnesium oxide yeah, is? Because I can take salad apart easily. I can take and magnesium oxide. It's it's a big deal to take it apart. It's not. It has to requires a chemical reaction to take magnesium and oxygen apart. Okay, so these atoms are chemically bonded, right? So that's the definition of a compound. Different kinds of atoms that are chemically bonded. Different kinds of atoms that are chemically bonded. <coughs>